Hi, I'm Frances McCarthy, Education and Outreach at Black Rock Castle and part of the team behind Space Week. I'm a volunteer leader with the Irish Girl Guides and we've worked with Irish Girl Guides to make a space badge. Ladybirds and brownies and guides will engage in fun space themed activities as part of the new space badge with the Irish Girl Guides. Good evening everyone and thank you for joining us for the launch of the Irish Girl Guides Space Badge. My name's Ashley Claffey, I'm a leader with Irish Girl Guides and I'll be your host tonight. It's very fitting to be launching this badge both during Space Week and also on International Day of the Girl. This evening we're delighted to be joined by representatives from Azero, ESA and Blackrock Castle Observatory. We're also joined by former Irish Girl Guide Ambassador Dr Neve Shaw and our guest speaker this evening Dr Kate Isaac of Chaos. Over the last number of years, we've seen the creation of interest badges focused on engineering, aviation and STEM, and we're looking forward to the space badge joining these. There are a number of activities that need to be completed to complete the space badges, and these activities will be available on the Irish Girl Guide website in the news section, irishgirlguides.ie, and also on the Azero Ireland website, esero.ie, and for leaders on OGM. If you're sharing tonight's space badge launch online, we encourage you to use the hashtag, hashtag IGG Space Badge. I now pass to Amanda O'Sullivan, the Chief Commis Commissioner of Irish Girl Guides, to share a few words. Thank you, Ashley, for that. As Chief Commissioner of the Irish Girl Guides, I'm thrilled and delighted to be a part of the launch of this new and exciting badge. The development of this badge is most appropriate for Irish Girl Guides, as it aligns with our guiding values and mission of developing girls and young women to their fullest potential as responsible citizens of the world. What does it represent to us in Irish Girl Guides? S, the supply of a lovely new badge with symbols of an astronaut, a rocket blasting off to allow us to get a greater view of the world. P, participation by our youth members with support of our volunteer leaders in this journey. A, the ability for Irish Girl Guides to raise awareness of the greater world above us. C, challenge of learning for our youth members with a new program and activities to support this learning. And E, exploration of this world that we all live in. Irish Girl Guides has been encouraged and supported by Dr. Neve Shaw and have worked in partnership with Blackrock Castle Observatory and in association with the European Space Education Resource Office, Search Office and Science Foundation Ireland to support and promote the development and launch of this badge today. The three badges will be a fantastic addition to our programme, both new and into the future. For ladybirds who are aged five to seven years, brownies who are aged eight to 10, guides who are aged 10 to 14, and our senior branch members who are aged 14 to 30, who have the opportunity to complete all three of these badges as part of their programme. The launch is particularly significant on this, the International Day of the Girl, and in empowering our members with a strong program of learning to promote curiosity. As Marlene Collins stated, when I was a child, I dreamed about space. I admired pilots, astronauts, and I've admired explorers of all kinds. And Irish Girl Guides are supporting girls to dream and to dream big. Thank you, Amanda. I think Lady Rhodes, Brownies, Guides, Senior Ranch, and leaders alike will be looking forward to taking on all things space. Next, we have two people who have their eyes on the stars but their feet firmly on the ground. We're joined by Stephanie O'Neill from the Azero, which is the European Space Education Resource Office and Science Foundation Ireland, and Rebecca Barnes from ESA Education Office. Stephanie. Thank you, Ashling, and thank you to the Girl Guides for allowing us to participate in such an amazing initiative. As Ashling said, my name is Stephanie O'Neill. I am representing the Azero Office and Science Foundation Ireland. Azero is the European Space Education Resource Office, and there is a network of 16 of these offices across Europe. So essentially, it's like an ESA or a European Space Ag Agency education office in each of the host countries. It's a contract between ESA and another organization in each of the countries. In Ireland, that organization is Science Foundation Ireland. Um, and we do sort of the same things across Europe, but we do them slightly differently so that we can fit with the needs of the host country. 
in Ireland, Azera works very closely with Science Foundation Ireland. We're trying to do the same things to promote science, technology, engineering and maths or STEM to promote careers in STEM and in the ESA education or the Azero um, um, opportunities are within the space sector. And also we want to promote the importance of space exploration and what that means to the modern society. We're delighted that, we, uh, that we're working with the Irish Girl Guides to produce these new resources for the ladybirds, the brownies and the guides. We funded this initiative through the SFI Discover funding call, and that's really all about promoting STEM and supporting partners like Blackrock Castle Observatory, the Irish Girl Guides, people like Neve Shaw to run projects. And we're so particularly interested in projects which work with girls and show girls that there are great opportunities for women and girls in science, technology, engineering and maths. So I'm going to hand over to um, my colleague Rebecca Barnes now from the European Space Agency and she'll maybe tell us a little bit more about what ESA does and about opportunities for girls. Thank you. Thanks Stephanie. Hi, uh, it's great to um, be here this evening. Uh, so the European Space Agency or ESA um, has 22 countries across Europe including Ireland that are uh, members of it and they will work together looking at different uh, aspects of space. So this could be from looking out into the universe, exploring the solar system, looking um, at our planet Earth and checking health checking it. Uh, it could be launching rockets or developing new technology. Uh, so it has all these countries to work together to, to build uh, these space projects. And uh, so it does uh, space missions and launches them and it makes exciting new discoveries and much more. So these are all obviously the very important aspects of what the European Space Agency does, but they also uh, has an important part, task of telling people uh, about uh, these different things and including uh, about the, um, it, it also is very important for ESA to encourage and inspire young people to pursue a career in fields of science and technology. Now, uh, in the future, it's likely that uh, most jobs will uh, require some understanding of maths and, and science uh, with lots of different skills. And space in particular is expected to become more and more important for, for life on Earth. And within these jobs, um, a gender balance uh, throughout uh, the, the work environments is needed. And so through uh, its education office, ESA has um, many, a number of different projects and its main project in primary and secondary is the Azira project, as Stephanie's already, already described. And it really um, is uh, ESA's main way of supporting education um, in, in its member countries. And it, as, Stephanie, as Stephanie already mentioned, it addresses national uh, education needs and also um, it can do it at the, with the national language. And through Azira, it's uh, projects uh, such as this uh, new badge uh, allow ESA to become a little bit uh, more involved uh, in stuff that happens uh, at different, in different countries. And uh, this, these badges are a, a really great way uh, for girls and, and young women to, to realize that they can um, play an important, uh, make an important contribution uh, to the world of science and te technology and, and that they have a really important uh, role to play. So thank you and uh, congratulations on the, the new, new badge in space. Thank you. And it's really great to have both of you as part of tonight's launch. Dr. Neve Shaw was the Irish Girl Guides Ambassador in 2019 and 2020, and this space badge was something she wanted to do as soon as she took on the role. She is an award-winning science communicator and is passionate about sharing space topics with the general public. Neve had her own launch too this week, launching her own book, Dream Big. Neve. Unmute there. Thank you, Ashling. Um, oh, this is such a great night. I'm just so happy. I have this, I've had this smile on my face all weekend because I'm just so proud that um, there would be a space badge um, as part of the Irish Girl Guides activities. 
because when I was eight years of age, um, I just became obsessed with space. And uh, at the phase that I grew up in, there didn't seem to be anybody that I knew in my line of sight that was involved in, in space in any way. And the great thing I think about having these uh, badges are that if there's any young girls who are equally interested in space, that there's a direct path now to the European Space Agency because a lot of the activities lean on the, um, the activities that have been created by the Education Office of the European Space Agency. And like you said, it was a very big part of my ambassadorship to, to help make a, a space badge happen. And uh, I may have come up with the idea, but I certainly was just the networker. It was a huge group effort from all of you. Um, massive driving force of, of Frances McCarthy from Black Rock Castle Observatory, who I sat down with once and then she did everything else to make it happen. And then bringing in uh, those partnerships and then Stephanie getting involved. And then um, also having lunch one day with uh, Dr. Kate Isaac and uh, just shooting the breeze about how much we love space and then finding out that we had this connection with the girl guides and her passion for the space badge to happen as well so i wear my neckerchief with pride and particularly because some but some young girl gave me my friendship knot and that means a huge amount to me so um i have nothing to say except thank you so much for all of you in, in making what I really wanted to happen uh, during my ambassadorship happen. And I didn't make it happen. You all did. So it was the biggest gift that you could ever give me that we got to this tonight. So um, thank you very much. And back to you, Ashley. And congratulations. Thank you, Niamh. Our guest speaker tonight is Dr. Kate Ibach. Kate is a former member of Girl Guiding UK, and she is a physicist working as project scientist for Chaos Mission to maximise the science return for the mission. She's based at ESA's Research and Technology Centre in the Netherlands. Kate, it's great to have you here with us tonight. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to, to share with you what I do and congratulations on this amazing, uh, amazing badge. It's so nice to have this uh, come, come to fruition. So if you bear with me for a second. I will share a little bit about what I do. Yes, so thanks for the introduction. I'm Kate. I work at the European Space Research and Technology Centre, so ESTEC, in the Netherlands, the flat and wetlands that we, that we are, which is one of the centres of the European uh, Space Agency. I have a number of different hats on. I'm primarily a scientist. I'm really excited and interested to know the hows and whys of many things. I've focused in my life on physics, I'm a physicist, and I focused even further then on uh, into astronomy and uh, space science. So I'm working at ESA as a project scientist, so looking to maximize the return of our science missions, working with scientists in the community and also with engineers at, uh, at ESA, within ESA, within the community, and also with, with industry to try and get the best possible science mission to answer some big questions in science that we have. I'm an outdoor enthusiast, I have to say. I used to do hang gliding at one point. I did beekeeping and I've done vegetable growing. And I think a lot of what I do and what I've done uh, in my personal and professional life actually has been inspired by my time as a girl guide and of course a brownie because I was one of those two. So what do I work on? The big question that I'm looking to, to answer with the missions that I'm working on is that of are we alone? Perhaps one of the biggest and most profound questions that our civilization can ask. Before we can actually get to the answer we have to go through a number of steps, break the problem down a bit. Are there other planets actually out there beyond our solar system? We know we have planets orbiting our own sun, but are there others orbiting others? What are they made of and how did they form and evolve? And of course then, are these planets actually potentially habitable? Can something live on those other planets? So to date, we know of over 4,000 planets that have been discovered orbiting stars around stars, stars orbiting stars other than, around others than our own sun. Some are small, some are large, some are hot, some are cold, rocky, gassy, puffy. But to date, none is exactly quite like our own. So here, uh, here is Chaops characterizing exoplanet satellite 
It's a small satellite about one and a half by one and a half meters, one and a half meters cubed. And what we do is to measure the sizes very precisely of exoplanets, so planets orbiting stars other than our own. What we do is measure the light from the stars and we watch and wait as the planet moves around in its orbit, blocking a small amount of the light from the star as it moves between us and the star. This dip here is a result of the light that's blocked by the planet as it moves in front of the star. You might know about this, you might be more familiar with this in the so-called Venus transit, which took place in 2014. Here we see Venus, uh, an image of the sun with Venus uh, on it. And also we see here a time-lapse uh, uh, set of images where we see the planet Venus moving across the, the, uh, the sun, the disk of the sun. Just to get an idea of the size of the effect that we're measuring here, we'd see a dip of 1% if we were to be able to see Jupiter transiting the sun. And it's 100 times smaller if we were to be, able to, to be able to detect that of the Earth, so a transit of the Earth around the sun. So it's a tiny signal that we're looking for. Here we have an example of one of the light curves that we measure with Kops. So we've monitored a star, following it, following the star, as the planet that we don't actually see in itself, but just its fingerprint, looking for the dip as the, the planet blocks a small amount of the light from the, the star. This is a very fresh uh, result. It's a paper that was published just a couple of weeks ago, and it was led by a scientist called Monica Lendl, an Austrian scientist working at the University of Geneva. So we're very international in what we did, as Rebecca said, your uh, ESA is made up of 22 member states, and we have scientists in Kops coming from 11 different countries. So from these light curves, by combining what we know we've measured from the light curve with other information, we're able to, to say quite a bit about the planet and also about the star. And we know that its day side temperature is up to 3,200 degrees centigrade. That's a little bit toasty, I think we can all agree, and it's certainly not a planet on which we could live. So here's some examples of some photographs of the um, Kops in different stages in the project. The satellite being built and tested in Spain, the instrument being finally assembled and tested at the University of Bern, the mission and science control centers in Spain and Switzerland, and of course the team of scientists which has been responsible for defining the mission, the science of this very exciting mission. We launched in De December 2019, and we're now getting some really exciting science out of the mission with more to come. So how did Girl Guides affect me? Uh, having chatted to Neve and, and thought a little bit also about what, I, what I've done, how, what I've done in my life, I would say that Girl Guides had a really profound impact on me. I got involved in hiking and walking and orienteering and tracking through Girl Guides. I did lots of badges. The challenge of covering my sleeve with badges and emblems was really quite exciting for me. All the new things that I wanted to learn, I was able to capture in badges. I did a lot of uh, camping, the tents here. This is an example of a tent that was back, uh, that was there back in my time, a little different from what people use these days, but uh, a nice experience, particularly for midnight feasts that we all had then, and I'm sure people still do, uh, uh, do now. Lots of map reading and also not, uh, not making. So how did this map onto what I do in my work? I would say my hiking and, um, and passion for the outdoors has, is captured in my work through exploring really the unknown trying to answer questions that we don't know the answer to. The badges are like new projects and new challenges. With the building of camping equipment and knots being building instruments or building projects so that we can answer new questions. Guides have always been an adventure with new tools, and, but also within a framework and a set of rules that, uh, that we have. So all very exciting and a nice way to proceed, matching my experience in guides with space. So how do I see this as, as, as working? We have girl guides and we have space. This lovely um, 
set of badges which people you have the opportunity to be able to work on you have the, the choice the option the opportunity to show your curiosity why do things work as they do you have to be determined you have to work out how these things work and you also have to persevere to get your badges done and these badges these lovely set this lovely set of three badges will give you the opportunity to open your eyes to something new and it's a fantastic opportunity to get involved in space and there's some lovely badges to add to your sleeve uh, of your uniforms all the best and, and good luck with this fantastic uh, this fantastic challenge that you have thank you thank you kate and um, we have a few questions from some of our members um, that we would like to ask you if that's okay sure with pleasure so we have a ladybird called lucy who wants to know um, did you always want to work as a scientist I've always wanted, that's a very interesting question. I've always want, had the, 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 there's always been the challenge of why. Why, why, why? Why does it work? Why is the grass green? Why does the sun shine? So for me, that was always the, at the bottom of my, my, my questions. And that's, that's what a scientist's job, scientist's job is to do, to try and answer the why. So I think my answer to you, long, long answered with a short final sentence, yes. <laughs> Very good. And um, we have a brownie called Zoe who would like to know from your time in guiding, do you have a favourite game or activity from your memories of guiding? Oh, British Bulldog. <laughs> we, I used to love that. We used to play across a field which sometimes was muddy and so you had to try and run, run across. I don't know if it's a similar game still. You, run, you were in two teams running across the field and trying to to catch, uh, catch the other, the other members of the team. And it was a fantastic thing to do when the weather was, uh, when the weather was good, even if the, the field was muddy, so. Brilliant, thank you. Um, we have a guide called Ellie, who would like to know what the coolest part of your job is. Oh, the coolest part. Oh, for me, I mean, mate, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the opportunity to work in these international, teams where we're all striving to to do a, with a common goal of answering a really cool question in in science i mean we want to find out are we alone we can't do that ourselves we're part of a much bigger uh, endeavor one part of that and it's just so cool to think that you know we're a, a step along that uh, path so for me that's that's really cool thank you and the last question um Quiva, who's the senior rancher um, is interested in a career in STEM and she's looking for some advice. What advice would you have for her? I would say go for it. If you don't try, you will not get. So always try and see what opportunities might come up. Talk to people at events like uh, this. Try and make links. Try and talk to people who might be in the same, in, in that particular business. And by all means, go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and try. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kate. That was really um, informative and everything. We're really happy to have you here tonight. Thank you so much. It's been a real uh, pleasure. And yes, Neve, it's, uh, it's great to have the, these badges come, come to fruition. All the best and good luck to everybody with the, with the badge work. Thank you. Hi, I'm Frances from Blackrock Castle Observatory, part of the team behind Space Week. And I'm here with the view using the software Stellarium from Ireland tonight. We're located in Ballycroy National Park up in County Mayo. So we're looking out to the west. Here we have the west at seven o'clock shortly after the sun has gone down. So if you want to orient yourself to the sky, use the sun and we're looking west at sunset. We're interested in finding the North Star. So find west and then turn to the right. I'll do that with my computer software and now we're looking to the north. Obviously in the real sky, you won't have N easily written for you on the ground. We'll go just a little bit later and see the first stars come out. So I'm speeding up time and bringing us through till about half past seven.
and we'll pause there just as the bright star Capella, the name pops up and this tells us that this is a really one of the brighter stars we see when we look north at this time of year. Now, we're interested in the North Star, which is a medium bright star. We're able to find it over the northern part of our planet using a couple of helper guides. One of those is the constellation of Cassiopeia, which looks like a W in the sky. So look around for five stars that are kind of W-ish, and it brings you over here. It's probably a little bit easier to find the shape that we refer to as the plow or the Big Dipper. It can be seen over in the northwest. So if I highlight this star, we're going to be looking for another three stars that come in a curving arc and then four that make a shape of a saucepan. So there's the pan with the big handle and this is known as the plough. It's part of the bigger pattern of Ursa Major, the big bear, but it's the tail and the back that we're interested in because these two stars, the edge of the saucepan, if we follow them five times this distance, one, two, three, four, five, there's Polaris, the North Star. And he's the tail of the baby bear. Now, if we were instead looking over at Cassiopeia, she is the queen seated on her throne. And over the course of the night, the sky appears to turn around the North Star. So if we go a little bit later, you can see her spinning around on her chair. The bear will be just across the northern part of the horizon and the tail of the baby bear, we're spinning. So our challenge for you is to take a selfie of yourself with the North Star behind you. So remember where the sun set to the west, turn to the right, find the shape of the plow, follow the lines, straight up, and there's the North Star in the sky. Good luck. So now we challenge you. We want you to try and find the North Star. Take a self selfie with it in the background, pop it online with the hashtag IGG Space Badge. This is just one of the many great activities that are part of the new Irish Girl Guide Space Badges. The rest of the activities can be found on the Irish Girl Guide website, irishgirlguides.ie, in the news section, or on the Azero Ireland website, eseoro.ie. We want to thank everyone who helped create this badge, taking it from the idea to where it is today. Thank you to all of our guests from Azero, ESA and Blackrock Castle Observatory. Thank you also to Neve, Kate and Amanda. We also want to thank you at home for joining us. If you're not currently a member of Irish Girl Guides and are interested in joining as a youth member or as a leader, please see the Irish Girl Guide website for more information. Now, there's only one thing left to do. Let's officially launch the Irish Girl Guides Space Badge. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Officially. <laughs>